Why are we seeing this almost contagion, this seeping through, not just across aluminium and not just in oil, two very separate stories with, with fundamental reasons for these price gains, but really across the board? Well, the metal complex uh, um, is, is relatively easily explainable with the, the imposition of sanctions that we saw back on April the 6th. And the response to aluminium has been logical. And as the market slowly starts to understand um, the extent to which Roussel penetrates the aluminium industry, um, we see that, uh, that perhaps these gains are justified. And indeed, people are calling for higher prices above $2,500 a tonne in aluminium. Yesterday's move in nickel, um, we were sort of expecting something, uh, something like that to happen, given the fact that uh, Roussel owns 25% of uh, Norilsk, which is the largest producer of nickel in Russia. But the move yesterday was, uh, was extreme. It was up 11% at one point. Um, and we don't really think that is uh, sustainable. Uh, and, and one of the ways of, of, of checking that is to look at the move in palladium yesterday. And remember that palladium and nickel are produced together. They're also they're produced by Norilsk. And we haven't had uh, a similar move uh, yesterday in palladium. So one of the things to do, you know, based on uh, which, which, which dovetails nicely with our fundamental insights, is if, if it gets worse, a long position um, in palladium uh, will benefit from that. The fundamentals of palladium are good anyway. And then to offset, offset that with a short position in nickel um, on the basis that the move is a little bit over-exaggerated um, is one way to, uh, to, to look at this. So, you know, if you're looking at the current rally, which is clearly driven by some of these negative uh, supply side concerns that the market has, if you look at the demand side concerns about slowing global growth, we're getting to the, to the tail end of this growth cycle, not to mention trade tensions still kind of playing out uh, in the medium to long term. Are there any reasons to suggest that this, this rally has legs? Well, there is some concern on the aluminium side. I mean, we must remember inventories of aluminium in China are, are large. Uh, there is a slowing demand for aluminium in China as a function of a slowdown in the automobile industry. So there is some caution, and that's triggered some profit-taking a little bit over the last few days on the aluminium rally. Nickel is supported nicely by, you know, stories like the electric vehicle story that whilst very far away, you know, nickel is one of the metals forecast to benefit from growth in, uh, in battery consumption and so on. And the metal complex as a whole, due to a period of, of massive underinvestment in new supply over the last four to five years, has been one of the sectors in the complex that we've certainly been favorable towards. We're still very favorable towards copper, for example. Copper hasn't partaked, hasn't, hasn't been a part of this, uh, this sanctions, uh, sanction-driven move. So we still see upside in copper as a function of diversified, globalized, synchronized growth.